Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's CJ. I want to welcome you guys back to episode 8 of my brand new 120 gallon reef system. Now, I just want to take a minute and catch you guys up on everything that's happened over the last few weeks. You know, as far as cycling the tank, equipment breaking in, my experience with Bukani Rock, and a few other questions I know if I was starting, you know, I would want to know the answer to. So, let's go ahead and jump right to it. So, before I can start filling the tank, I had to address my RODI situation meaning I had to replace all of the sediment filters, carbon blocks, and the DI resin considering it was almost two years old from the JBJ. I want to have a fresh start. Now, I also knew I was gonna be making a lot more water than I have in the past. So I went ahead and took advantage of the 150 gallon, you know, space saver kit from Bulk Roof Supply, which basically, you know, puts another membrane in line and makes you make water a lot faster, which definitely, you know, made a huge difference when it came to filling up this tank. Now, even with all the changes I made, it still takes me roughly eight or nine minutes to make one gallon of RODI water. So you multiply that by the size of this tank and it adds up to a long, long time filling it up. It took anywhere between 16 and 17 hours to fill up the display and the sump. So, you know, it puts my system around maybe 110 to 115 gallons of water, which isn't too bad and I can work with it. So to start the cycling process off, I decided to use the cheapest salt available to me, which of course, you know, is the good old purple stuff, the instant ocean salt. Now I do not intend on using this during the normal life of my tank. I'm kind of torn between three options. I'm gonna put a poll on the top right, curious to see what you guys thoughts are. You know, instant ocean reef crystals, which I've always used for the entirety, you know, of my time in the hobby, HW marine salt, or CCAM's aqua retro salinity salt. So just curious what you guys thoughts are on that. I'll make that decision later once the cycle completes and we'll finally, you know, get this tank ready for corals. Now, I'm definitely a firm believer in cycling your tanks as natural as possible, meaning I've never used any of those bacteria in the bottle or, you know, any of those supplements that are supposed to, you know, cycle your tank instantly. What I found works best is good old media. Keep in mind this media was running in my nano system for, you know, the last four months and then the JBJ for two years before that, so has tons and tons of denitrifying and nitrifying bacteria built inside of it. So this pine matrix media should definitely help kick off the cycle and get us off to a good start. So at this point, we're officially three weeks in and it's finally time to you know check the parameters and see just how far we are in this cycling process. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, you know, why haven't you been checking it before? Well, honestly, I'm well aware it's gonna take, you know, anywhere between four and six weeks, maybe longer. So why waste the reagents, waste the time? I'd rather just check it, you know, every few weeks. Whenever it comes to cycling a tank, it all boils down to having some source of ammonia. You know, whether you're adding fish or doing it fishless, adding the drops, or in my situation, taking advantage of a natural way, meaning the Bukani rock. Keep in mind, this drop Bukani has tons of, you know, dried up sponges, organics, crustaceans, everything you can think of that would be on live rock is just a dried version of it on that. So. Over the last few weeks, it's been breaking down. I haven't had to touch one thing. It's been feeding that bacteria that I've seeded with the pond matrix. And as you guys can tell, the nitrogen cycle is almost complete. And by almost, I mean I'm getting nitrite readings, nitrate readings, and pretty much zero to no ammonia readings. So for anyone that understands the nitrogen cycle, you know I'm pretty much close. I'll give it another two weeks before I can finally add fish to the tank. So let me give you guys a quick introduction to this CCAMS Matrix Carbon. Now I've been using this stuff for roughly two years and it's worked fairly well. I mean, whether I put it in a media bag or in a reactor, you know, both applications, it seems pretty easy to work with. I think it's the shape of the carbon itself because it's in spheres or those little balls. It really isn't as dusty as I've noticed other carbons, easy to clean. So it makes it perfect for, you know, throwing it in a reactor like I'm doing right now. Now the whole reason for using it, that's gonna be the main question, right? It all boils down to the organics in my water column. You know, as the Pukani breaks down and leaches that ammonia and the organics break down, it definitely started releasing a smell. I noticed that after day four, it really released a pungent, you know, mildewy, earthy smell. And I just had to do something about it. Otherwise, you know, the whole house was just gonna reek for the rest of this cycle process. So. One great thing about this media reactor, running off the manifold, I can control the speed, dial it back, and I would say after roughly two or three days, no smell at all coming from this Bukani. So carbon saved the day. Highly recommend using it during their cycle process. 
it'll definitely get you by. Now when it comes to this SCA302 skimmer, this was the perfect time to go ahead and break this skimmer in and also help remove some of those organics from that Pucani. It took roughly four days before I started getting a nice foam head on it. Still got some adjusting and tweaking to do, it's too early to give a review, but you know, first signs are pretty good for this skimmer. Then the last piece of equipment to break in is going to be my Rain 2 algae scrubber provided by Santa Monica Filtrations. Now this algae scrubber is going to take a while to grow, I understand that. You have to take your time, you know, even though it has four lights included, you want to start off with one light until you see algae and then slowly increase it as the algae grows. And so far, you know, limited growth, limited nutrients available for, you know, the algae to even feed off of, so I didn't expect much. But I am seeing a little bit showing on the bottom of the screen, so pretty good progress so far. I'll update you guys more on this scrubber when there's more to show. Now during the cycle process, I did decide to leave the tank bare bottom. There's just way too many benefits to outweigh, you know, the aesthetics of it, meaning I didn't care how ugly it looked, as long as I can crank the flow up and get all of the detritus and, you know, organics that were too big to break down from the system. And that's pretty much what I did. Every week, I would go in with the power head, blow out all the crevices, and allow everything to settle. Either go over the overflow and through my filter floss, or settle into piles in the tank to where I can come back later with the siphon hose and suck that stuff out. You know, the plan is to let the tank cycle, but at the same time, not have a huge buildup of larger pieces of, you know, crap and the, you know, organics or whatever the case may be. Get those removed from the system before I added the sand later down the road. Now we're gonna compare the shots, bare bottom and sand. I'm gonna let you guys decide what you think looks better. So after a few weeks of going back and forth between should I use something I've had before or something new, I decided to go with the Tropic Eden Tonga Mini Flakes. Now of course the grain size was important because I wanted the right balance between sand sifting fish being happy and my gyro wave pumps not blowing sand all over the place. So a two millimeter size seemed like the perfect fit for you know that happy medium in between. But I will tell you this, you know, this sand has a huge reputation for being really clean you know, and being really uniform as far as the grain size. Half of that story I would say is true, but when it comes to the cleanliness, it's just like any other sand. If you guys can see, huge dust cloud. You know, I didn't rinse the sand. 90 pounds is just too much sand to rinse. But after a couple of days, I will say it cleaned up nicely. It definitely did not disappoint. So first things first, we gotta test out these gyro pumps to see if this sand can take it. So I went ahead and cranked them both to 100% with the gyro 130 being on the left and the gyro 230 being on the right. Now keep in mind the sand's just settled so if something was going to fly this was the time it was going to happen. But as you guys can tell left side and right side of the tank everything is staying put so that definitely uh, is a huge relief for me because it lets me know I can maximize the flow in this tank without worrying about dust clouds and everything will be just fine. Now you also have to keep in mind that same bacteria that's colonizing the Bucani rock is also going to colonize my sand making it live. It's basically going to add another layer of filtration to my tank which is always a good thing and it's also going to help weigh down the smaller particles in the sand you know help them clump together and help prevent those dust storms in the future. Now one thing I'll consider when I added the sand to the tank was the depth. You know, I only used 90 pounds because I wanted it just deep enough for rats to bury themselves, one to two inches, but also shallow enough for me to be able to maintenance it easy. Meaning I can go through and siphon the sand bed for detritus and remove all that junk later when the time comes. So just things to consider when you add your sand, you know, think about flow, think about what livestock you're going to use, and think about what filtration benefits you want from it and what maintenance plan you're going to have for it later down the road. So at this point, all the boxes have been checked. The tank's cycling, the equipment's breaking in, and the sand has been successfully added to the roof tank. So it's safe to say the 120 gallon tank is officially started. So what's next? You know, where do we go from here? Well, up until this point, the tank has been bare bottom with no lights running on the tank. The whole reason for that is to avoid going through two diatom blooms or two algae cycles. Meaning when I added the sand, I added additional silicates, I added additional things that algae is going to want to grow and I want it to happen all at once so I can just get it done and over with. You know, you can't avoid that stage of cycling a tank, it's going to have that ugly stage and that's what I'm looking forward to now. So the lights will be running normal time, you know, basically everything's going to be running just like 
It's a fully stocked reef tank, so everything can finally balance out and mature to the point, you know, to where I can add fish later. So I'm gonna be documenting that as well for anyone that is afraid of the ugly stage in their tank. Trust me, you can get through it, and I'm gonna show you how I do it with this tank. So thanks for a good stopping point. As always, hey, you guys like, comment, subscribe. You guys do what y'all do. Y'all be easy and happy reefing.